The Nissan X-Trail entered its second generation in early 2007 with the G31 chassis code and a public reveal at the Geneva Motor Show. Japanese customers received the X-Trail first in the summer of that same year followed by European deliveries and Australians would pick up their new cars from dealers before the end of that same year. Interestingly, Canadians would miss out on this generation after having the previous T30 model, instead getting the Nissan Rogue along with the USA. Both the X-Trail and Rogue are built atop the C-platform shared between Renault and Nissan. In China, the model started as the Nissan X-Trail, but would have its life extended when it became the Dong Feng Feng Du X6 in 2015 and continued production until 2019. Originally, the X-Trail was built in four markets, Japan, China, Indonesia and Russia. Depending on where you live will dictate where your X-Trail was made. When looking at the used market, note that a facelift refresh occurred in mid-2010, and so expect a step up in price between the pre- and post-facelift models of that year. Special editions began appearing in 2012, and the model was replaced in 2013 in most markets with the introduction of the T32 X-Trail, which would also be the new Nissan Rogue. Although we'll go into more details on the engines later in this guide, the three choices available consist of two petrol engines and a single diesel mated to either a manual gearbox or CVT automatic. For those unfamiliar with a CVT, it acts similar to any other automatic from the driver's seat and won't require you to learn anything new, but in most common form, instead of the gearing having a set ratio, there is an endless number of ratios that the system can adjust to as the vehicle is driven, making it smoother as you aren't shifting ratios for better performance during acceleration and deceleration. The intricacies of the system are beyond the scope of this buyer's guide, but knowing this simple difference should help you decide if the automatic is for you, as only the CVT is offered. When on a test drive, you should feel a very smooth shift, almost seamless at every time, if you don't, you may mistake this for how a regular automatic shifts and think it is normal, but in fact, be overlooking a problem. A CVT that is hesitant between drive, park and reverse may be signalling the first signs of a problem. Any noticeable shifting when accelerating or slip in power delivery is a sign of a faulty CVT and they can be expensive to fix. One thing to note is that a CVT gearboxes are a bit noisier than regular automatics. You shouldn't excuse a loud whine or rumble but a few decibels more from the gearbox than you're used to from a conventional automatic can be normal. Expect the noise to be in the form of a light whirring sound. Also, note that if you're known by your friends to be the quickest accelerating X-Trail driver this side of Mount Fuji, the CVT won't suit your driving style. They are for smooth shifts and steady yet consistent acceleration, not the racetrack or Burger King burnout rally, tow hitch and caravan optional on a Saturday night. And since we've mentioned caravans, the towing capacity of the T31 X-Trail seems to have mixed numbers. Some markets report a 2,000kg maximum, while others seem to go as high as 2,200kg for the later facelift models, although we only found this quoted from owners. Note that early CVT auto diesel models had 1,350kg as the listed tow rate. All of these numbers are for braked trailers. Moving on to safety, and the X-Trail scored 4 stars in Euro NCAP testing. This score and testing data was used by Australian NCAP to also give a 4 star safety rating. However, it should be noted that Euro NCAP became unlisted once the new testing regime begins, and so no overall score is shown on their website. The highest performance was adult occupancy safety, and the poorest was pedestrian safety. Next up are the recalls, and a November 2009 recall was made after it was found a cover screw which secured the pinion shaft and the steering gear to the gear housing could become loose. In a worst case, this could result in a loss of steering control. Vehicles in VIM range JN1TAN T31 A0000010 to JN1TAN T31 A001449 or if you have a diesel engine model, VIN range JN1TCN T31 A0000002 to JN1TCN T31 A0002486. In October 2012, models equipped with a diesel engine could warp the front insulation in the lower bulkhead and could contact the turbocharger, leading to a potential fire hazard. We can't list individual VINs in our guide, but Nissan advised that VINs ending 002 to 0404 could be affected. 
You'll need to check with the local dealer or service record of the vehicle to see if you are purchasing a vehicle that was part of the recall, but as long as the work has been done, it shouldn't be a concern. On to the common faults and a reminder to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying our content, and as we build a positive community around the channel, we hope you'll join us. We also have a podcast and website you can check out, as well as the Miles Driven book if you'd like to read a good automotive story, all links are in the top comment and the description below. When viewing a vehicle attempt to check underneath for any signs of grounding, this generation has been around for over a decade, so some owners may have needed its off-road ability, and although ground clearance is reasonable, it can ground out when taken into deeper off-road trails. A bearing in the CVT gearbox of early T31 X-Trail models was overloaded, the bearing was prone to failure, Nissan ended up replacing some transmissions due to this, and the problem was resolved on facelift models. Speak to an owner if you're looking at an early model with a CVT Auto to find out whether it's had this previous repair. Diesel owners usually fear the acronym DPF followed by clogged, faulty or broken. This is a common issue with many older diesel cars, but the diesel particulate filter on the T31 X trails will fail with age. After all, they are a filtration system that wears. If you find one that has had this unit replaced, take it as a positive buying sign. Anti-roll bar links will clunk or knock if they are due for replacement. Try to find some speed bumps or lower quality roads on a test drive and listen out for any sounds from the suspension. As many X-Trail owners will attest to, the vehicles are reliable when looking at a major component, so our list of common areas to check is for electrical issues. This is partly due to age and also a few wiring issues that we found from owners that suffered with issues from headlights staying on and not switching off, intermediate engine lights, cars not locking, airbag warning lights and cruise controls becoming inoperative. These are usually resolved either by owners tracing along wires, control modules and grounding areas and needing to make a minor repair or getting a good auto electrician. Overall, don't expect an X-Trail to suffer all of these failures at the same time, with most owners having none or only having one or two minor electrical repairs needed in their ownership. As ever, we try and stick to common faults, but if you own a T31 X-Trail and feel we've missed something that has become a common problem, or want to add your ownership experience, please add it in the comments below. Next, upload the engines and a reminder to press the like button on this video if you think we've earned it. Since there is a single diesel model, we'll start with that one. The 2.0-litre four-cylinder turbo diesel engine coded M9R was first equipped to the Renault Laguna in 2006 before making into the Nissan vehicles with the X-Trail and Qashqai picked up first. In the X-Trail you'll get 148 brake horsepower with an average of 34.9 to 44.1 miles per gallon or 8.09 to 6.41 litres per 100 kilometres. We found examples with mileages as high as 250,000 miles or 400,000 kilometres proving that a well-kept model can certainly last, but one note from owners that we found that had ran diesels to high mileage was the need to stick to a six-month oil service schedule. As mentioned earlier, DPF filters should manage 10 years but will fail eventually and should be budgeted for if you're looking at an example that has yet to have one changed. When looking at a used model, check any hoses that you can see, both coolant and air feeds, as age deterioration may be setting in. Another thing to consider is timing chain replacement, some people will quote a chain is for life, but for the cost it may be worth considering changing this as preventative maintenance. If you find one that has already had this done, take it as a positive buying sign. On to the petrols, as a note, the 2 litre is a Renault Nissan designed engine. The 2.5 is a Nissan creation as it was engineered prior to the Alliance and released just six months after the two companies began a joint strategy. For this reason, the 2 litre is more widely used across a greater range of vehicles. The 2.0-litre four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine, coded MR20DE, produces 145 brake horsepower and averages 32.5 miles per gallon, or 8.69 litres per 100 kilometres. These are again considered overall to be reliable, but listen to the engine at idle for any noise that is accompanied by a rough idle. The timing chain is likely failing and will need changing soon if this is the case. High oil usage may be due to the oil rings failing or wearing on the cylinder walls. If you notice high oil use, it is worth using a boroscope to check the cylinders. Finally, check that major services have been carried out by a reputable specialist. Spark plugs must be changed on a cold MR20 engine and damage to the plug or thread can happen if they have been forced on or off at too high a torque on a hot engine. 
The 2.5 litre four cylinder is a popular choice for those wanting some extra power. Coded QR25DE, it has been around for just shy of a decade when it reached the T31X trail and was updated in 2007 to improve performance and efficiency. Producing 167 brake horsepower with an average of 30.4 miles per gallon or 9.29 litres per 100 kilometres. These are generally considered incredibly reliable, however if you're looking at a high mileage example then listen for any rattles from the timing chain. If you hear a rattle then it will likely need replacing. Aside from this, earlier engines could suffer oil leaks, so it's worth having a look around the engine for any signs of a leak before you buy. For our picks, on a lower budget we look at a 2.5 litre early model, and with a higher budget a late 2 litre diesel. Next, why not check out our guide for the similarly aged Land Rover Freelander 2, or our guide on the Audi Q5.